Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Autoblog. As we all know, crossovers are everything in the automotive industry. Americans and consumers across the globe just can't get enough of these vehicles. And for manufacturers, sales volume is off the charts and they're probably making a heck of a lot more money selling crossovers than sedans. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. But for premium luxury manufacturers like Aston Martin, Lamborghini, and Porsche, was building a crossover really necessary? And for a lot of automotive journalists, and I think even automotive historians, the answer would be absolutely, because in the long run, the Aston Martin DBX that I'm standing next to is going to allow the brand to continue making the Vantage, the DB11, and the DBS. And as enthusiasts, we should be embracing these vehicles in more ways than one. So far in 2021, the Aston Martin DBX is making up 55% of sales for the brand. And that right there is why premium luxury brands are making crossovers like this. But think about it, back 20 years ago, what did you have to work with when it came to trying to find a family-friendly premium luxury car? Because if you wanted to buy an Aston Martin, they're all two-door sports cars. And later on, of course, we got the Rapide, but that was basically it. You had to buy a second car. But today, you can now get everything you want and desire in a vehicle all in one package. And that's why I'm here to take a look at the Aston Martin DBX to understand why consumers across the globe are really loving this vehicle and also why it might be a crossover that is suitable for James Bond. Now before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Aston Martin of Boston in Nord, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Aston Martin, Lotus, and used exotic inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Seeing the success luxury brands have had with crossovers that balance performance and refinement, it was only a matter of time before one of Britain's most iconic automakers decided to do the same. It wouldn't be far-fetched to say that some of the hesitancy to transitioning to this new era in the automotive world for Aston Martin can be attributed to a sense of going against tradition, while also being sacrilegious to an extent as they've always been known for manufacturing fun grand tours. The Aston Martin DBX arrives when Bentley, Lamborghini, and Maserati all have crossovers of their own. But the question many have asked is whether the DBX can still bring the same driving characteristics and environment that made cars like the Vantage and Vanquish so special, while also being unique at the same time. Starting off with pricing, the Aston Martin DBX comes in with a base price of just under $177,000, which is pretty much identical to the Bentley Bentayga, making it the closest rival to the DBX in this market, as the Lamborghini Urus will cost close to $50,000 more depending on how many options you go with when ordering your Aston Martin crossover. While closely related to the Vantage, the DBX is built on its own dedicated platform, which is going to give this crossover a unique feel compared to its athletic siblings. In terms of dimensions, the DBX is actually a few inches smaller than the Bentayga and Urus, and having a lower roofline certainly makes it appear to be a smaller SUV. But when parked next to the Porsche Cayenne, it's about 4 inches longer. If you've browsed the inventory at your local Aston Martin dealer, you've probably noticed that the DBX has air suspension, with Sport Plus mode being the most aggressive for that lower center of gravity to take on winding back roads. And for daily driving purposes during the winter, 
there will be a ground clearance of 7.5 inches, which is enough room to take on unplowed streets. Where the DBX impresses the most, however, is with its striking road presence, as its classy and sophisticated style is an attention grabber for sure. Even better, the designer struck the right balance of using cosmetic features found on current Aston Martin models, while at the same time giving the DBX its own unique character to really stand out in the lineup. While there's still enthusiasts out there who may say that crossovers for premium luxury brands is almost blasphemous, the DBX is a family-friendly vehicle that doesn't feel like it's going against Aston Martin's heritage, and instead complements the grand tours in the product line quite well. Letting you know that the DBX is a capable crossover when it comes to performance are the hood vents which integrate very well with the body lines. But also doubling as an upmarket and posh crossover, the LED daytime running lights mounted on the lower portion of the front fascia is a nice aesthetic touch. And of course, you have LED headlights for an upscale look, but also to provide better illumination at night. Moving over to the side profile, our model is sitting on the optional 22-inch ribbon satin black diamond turned wheels with red brake calipers for sportier credentials to give the DBX an aggressive stance. While you do have bigger tires, ride quality is what you would expect from an Aston Martin, as the DBX was able to handle imperfections in the road with ease. Adding some color contrast, our model for this review has gloss black side mirror caps with LED turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, what draws your attention immediately is that the rear third of the DBX is essentially an Aston Martin Vantage, as everything from the LED taillights to the rear diffuser and dual exhaust outlets to even how the C-pillars are sculpted are pretty much identical to the two-door sports car. The low roofline and body lines stay true to Aston Martin's identity, and while the DBX is going to lean more towards the premium luxury and family-oriented side of things rather than being a track-focused crossover, you still have the Grand Tour style that sets it apart from your average family hauler. For performance, the DBX is powered by a 4-liter twin-turbocharged V8 engine from Mercedes-Benz, which puts out 542 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with a 9-speed automatic transmission. Obviously, for an Aston Martin, acceleration times are going to be important, and for the DBX, it's capable of going from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. But unlike a Porsche Cayenne GTS or Turbo, for example, it manages the performance quite differently, to a point where accelerations are smooth and linear, but doesn't give you the sense that it's raw power. You have immediate propulsion off the line, but the DBX prioritizes comfort and its grand touring DNA rather than being a direct rival to a Lamborghini Urus. For the drivetrain, all-wheel drive will come standard for year-round drivability. And when it comes to fuel efficiency, you can expect to receive right around 14 miles per gallon in the city and 18 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you can buy a classy and luxurious interior with a leather stitch dashboard and leather seats to create an atmosphere that you're not going to find on vehicles in more affordable price ranges. For those who have a keen eye for the smaller details, you're going to notice some Mercedes-Benz parts have made their way into the layout of the center console, as the DBX does use some German technology to help complete the front portion of the cabin. Getting back to the seats, you're going to feel snug behind the wheel, as bolstering will keep you in place on spirited drives, but more importantly is how relaxed you feel as well thanks to the plushness of the leather. In front of you, there will be a fully digital gauge cluster to help modernize the interior, but it should be noted that functionality is not as in-depth as you'll experience with Lamborghini or Porsche. But as we see with most information displays, the gauges do change color when switching to different drive modes. Then as we take a look at the infotainment system, there'll be a 10 inch screen. However, it won't be touch sensitive. So we'll be using the rotary dial and touchpad found in the center console. Thanks to the partnership with Mercedes-Benz, you will have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. And also of course, onboard navigation. This user interface will take a few minutes to get used to as you scroll through different menus and features. But one minor touch that many owners are going to love is the ambient lighting to help set the mood during your road trips. 
With a crossover price around $200,000, there might be a bit of concern when parking the DBX on city streets or in a crowded garage. But thankfully, there's plenty of camera angles to make sure you don't get yourself into trouble when parking or navigating through smaller streets. Below, you'll find the buttons for your dual zone climate control and heated and ventilated seats to go along with the lock and unlock buttons, which are conveniently placed within arm's reach. For the center console itself, there'll be buttons mounted on either side of the rotary dial and touchpad, with your drive mode selector, air suspension, and hill descent control being found on the left, and on the right will be your park assist features, auto start stop, and also the power switch for the head unit. For the center storage compartment, you have enough room for a smartphone or smaller items. And it's here where you'll also have two USB inputs. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a massive panoramic sunroof to make the interior feel more spacious while also letting in some natural light. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off on the passenger side. And the seat is adjusted further back. It's also on a recline. And I have a good amount of legroom to work with here. And even though the Aston Martin DBX might not be the most spacious vehicle in this segment, if you are an Aston Martin enthusiast and you want to bring your family along, you can. This vehicle is definitely family friendly and conducive for more than two people in this vehicle overall. And in the past, you couldn't say that for brands like Porsche, Aston Martin, or Lamborghini. So that's why we're really starting to see a lot of people, not only in America, but across the globe, really buying into these vehicles. And that's why crossovers like the DBX are going to be what keeps sports cars alive from these brands. Now, for the center seat, there are some good placements for my feet. Also, the DBX is surprisingly wide. Now, I'm not exactly sure if you're, you're gonna be able to fit three average size adults back here. I still think shoulder might be a bit of a squeeze. Also, the way these seats are reclined, it might be affect legroom as well also just overall interior space so i would say this vehicle is probably more conducive for just two people back here especially with the very aggressive center hump it's wider so it does force me to spread my legs a little bit more than i want to but of course this is a crossover so anything over two people in this vehicle overall is a win for aston martin so definitely spacious for two people back here but i'm still skeptic about trying to fit a third person and then on the driver's side, this seat is just as someone of my head around 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom to work with here, but also when it comes to headroom, we have a fixed panoramic sunroof and you have plenty of headroom to work with. So I really like the space and interior room of the DBX. Also I love the comfort as well. This is a very premium vehicle and you just breathe in the smell of that leather. This is an experience. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people are going to love about this vehicle, whether they own it or they're just sitting as a passenger, it's a great vehicle to be in at all times. Also back here, you will have air vents mounted on the B pillar. So you're gonna have a good amount of ventilation to work with. Then for the center console, you will have two rear air vents, of course, to go along with climb control and heated and ventilated outboard seats. So you're gonna be nice and comfortable back here for sure. And then also, of course, two USB inputs. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest and there will be enough room for two cup holders, but they're kind of small. So maybe just one cup holder uh, for this vehicle. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate, obviously. And inside you're gonna find right around 22.2 cubic feet of rear cargo space. Now that does not sound like a whole heck of a lot for a crossover. However, when it's compared to its closest rivals, like the Lamborghini Urus, Bentley Bentayga, and the Porsche Cayenne, it all falls right in line with its rivals. And really, when you look at the brands that are building these sports crossovers, really, they have made and manufactured Grand Tours and sports cars pretty much their entire existence. So obviously the crossover is gonna have a lower roof line. They're gonna be seen as a four-door Grand Tour, and that's exactly what the Aston Martin DBX is. Now also behind the second row seats, there's plenty of room for smaller items, my camera gear, and of course, groceries. And I apologize for another movie reference. But when I look at this vehicle and other crossovers in this price range and segment, all I can think about is the scene from Goodwill Hunting. When the guy from Harvard says, you'll be serving my kids fries 
on our way to a skiing trip. And that's exactly what I see the DBX being used for because it is family friendly. There is enough room for gear back here. And I can totally see somebody who is going on that skiing trip with their family, whether it's in the Swiss Alps or up here in New England going to the White Mountains. That's why these vehicles have become so appealing. And in fact, as I said during the intro of this video, the DBX is making up about 55% of sales for the Aston Martin brand. Then with the second row seats folded, that space is right around double in size. Now obviously, you're not going to be using this vehicle to move furniture around. You're going to probably rent another vehicle out. You're not going to want to mess up the carpeting in this vehicle. But you do have that practicality and that's why brands like Porsche, Lamborghini, Aston Martin and soon Ferrari are going to build these cars because they're suitable for people who have a family but also have the money to spend over $200,000. Then on the right side of the rear cargo area, you will have buttons to automatically lower the second row seats. So by simply pressing on it, they will automatically fold and there'll be no need to use any manual labor whatsoever. Then on the left side, you're gonna have two buttons again, and this is to lower and raise the air suspension to help you load up your vehicle if you do have heavier items. So that's really great to see. Then beneath the floor mat, you will find your spare tire. So if you do encounter a flat on your journeys or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. Also, of course, with this vehicle being a crossover, you will have a rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything that's expensive, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. All right, so let's take the Aston Martin DBX out for a test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, and how it compares to other premium luxury crossovers on the market. And as you can probably tell, it's a completely different day and a completely different DBX, but it should all be the same. So let's have some fun, but also be responsible as well. Now the first thing that I noticed immediately with the DBX is just how smooth it runs. Not only when it comes to the ride quality, even in sport mode, but also the acceleration, it's very linear. Very linear. <laughs> this is nice. This is really nice. Now as you can tell though, with the DBX, with it being an Aston Martin, it's going to lean more towards the luxury side of things rather than being super sporty. So you're not going to have, even in sport mode, I'm not noticing that ruggedness to the suspension. It is pretty soft. I could drive in sport mode the entire time. I know a lot of people would go probably for GT mode, but sport mode is definitely dailyable. Now compared to say a vehicle like the Porsche Cayenne GTS, the DBX is going to be more towards on the softer side of things. It's not going to be as raw powered. You're not going to get that real kickback in your seat. You're not really going to notice the more aggressive or even a muscle car like feel. Whereas the DBX really leans more towards that premium luxury side of things, similar to other Grand Tours. And that's why I think Aston Martin has done quite well with this vehicle in its first year of sales, because this is exactly what consumers are looking for. They want to have a vehicle that is practical, that's fun, that has that power, but also doesn't lack the comfort. And I gotta be honest, even though these seats are not really aggressively bolstered, they're nice and soft, they're plush, and they keep you in place and they're firm. And I love that. Uh, this is a vehicle that you want to drive on a daily basis. Going back to GT mode, what you are going to notice is that the DBX does relax quite a bit. So you don't get that aggressive steering. You get more of this softer and quieter interior. And this is probably the mode you're going to be in when you're driving through the city or in the suburbs. However, I would still be in sport mode at all times. So that's exactly what we are going to do. I am going to put it in sport plus mode. Yes, the V8 comes to life right there and it definitely resonates in the interior. 
So what I like about the DBX is that you have the ability to get that aggressive and sporty nature to the vehicle uh, in Sport and Sport Plus. And of course, in Sport Plus, you get the aggressiveness of the engine and exhaust note that gets pumped in to the interior, but I don't mind that, uh, especially where most people who are looking to buy a DBX are still going more towards the luxury side of things. And really for uh, just the look of the DBX too, you make a grand entrance for sure. But then when you want to relax and you want to really enjoy the driving experience on longer drives, you put it in GT mode and you're going to have that enjoyment. Now when it comes to brake feel, it is a bit touchy and that's one thing to keep in mind also with the accelerator as well. Uh, ease into the throttle a bit because you will get that initial jolt, especially when you are at a stoplight. Uh, so you want to ease into the throttle. Also I think you want to ease into the brake pedal as well. Now when it comes to steering input, what's really interesting is that it doesn't have this tightness to it. It's not very weighted like most German vehicles. So it has this smoothness. It has this nice and darty feel. So you can get around obstacles on the road and it just feels really nice. The whole driving experience to me is everything smooth. Everything is more refined and relaxed. And I think that's why we've seen so many people hop on the DBX bandwagon because I think when you look at the Lamborghini Urus, when you look at other premium luxury crossovers, they really emphasize the performance. They emphasize the aggressiveness and, and this almost track-like feel for a crossover that most people are not going to be using at all times. So the DBX definitely uh, puts the luxury aspect, the daily driving aspects first, which I think is why so many people are loving this crossover. Now, another reason why you want to go with the DBX over any other premium luxury crossover is because you have a nice leather interior. Everything is soft touch. Everything is really high quality. And that's why this vehicle is worth close to $200,000. But also one of the reasons why you want to go with the DBX over the Lamborghini Urus is because it's also more affordable as well. You don't really feel a lot of body roll in this crossover at all. So it has a nice firm feeling. Also, of course, because it has that, um, that air ride suspension, you have that lower center of gravity when you have it in sport and sport plus mode. So you, it has that car like feel and that sports car styling and, and handling. <laughs> wow. It's just smooth. That's the word I've been using this entire test drive. It's smooth. Now, one thing I would like to see though is more aggressive brakes, especially where you are going to have that temptation of pushing this crossover to its limits, especially if you are going to the mountains, maybe this time of year, maybe you're going hiking or just going sightseeing, or maybe even during the winter, maybe you're going to go skiing and snowboarding. Cause I can totally see someone doing this uh, in the DBX, especially where you have that practicality. You want to have that nice responsive brakes uh, just because up on the mountains, you're going to have those tight corners. I would like to see that because you have the corning ability with this crosser. If you had that lower center of gravity, so you don't have the body roll, but I think really what's missing is stronger brakes. And I think that's what I want to see um, with Aston Martin moving forward, even though I think the DBX is really leaning more towards the luxury and the upper class feel for this vehicle. I still would like to see more of that sports car like um, design and also uh, just the driving characteristics. So let's do one more acceleration before I head back to the dealership. <laughs> that is so nice. That is so nice. Also, when it comes to the road noise, you don't really hear a lot of it. it. This interior is very well insulated, and that's to be expected. It is an Aston Martin. This vehicle starts around $180,000. You can spec it up all the way past $200,000. So obviously, it's going to be very well refined. It's going to be uh, designed quite well, and it just adds to the overall ambiance of this crossover. This is really enjoyable. I could see myself driving this 
uh, every single day during the week for sure. Especially where, say you have an Aston Martin Vantage in the driveway or in the garage and you're looking for a daily driver, the DBX is a perfect complement to the, to the uh, Vantage or any other sports car you have in your garage. So I can totally see why this vehicle has done quite well for itself in the first year, year and a half of its existence just because it definitely balances the daily driving aspect but also being fun and enjoyable to drive as well. So at the end of the day, what are my final thoughts for the Aston Martin DBX? And I think it comes back to the interior and I can only use this as a way to describe what I'm experiencing here is that the interior of an Aston Martin DBX is like gourmet chocolate compared to say a Hershey's bar that would be found in any other luxury crossover. Because when you eat gourmet chocolate like lint chocolate or maybe something from Germany or the Switzerland, you have to indulge, you have to enjoy every single bite. And that's what it's like being behind the wheel of the Aston Martin DBX. It's a whole different level. The smell of the leather, just the way the interior is laid out, and the leather stitch dashboard, this is one step up above a lot of brands that try being premium luxury. And I love it. I love the interior layout. I love this cockpit feel. I love the driver-centric uh, layout. And that's why this vehicle really speaks to someone to, like me who is a car enthusiast because it has a car enthusiast layout. But also I think for buyers who are specifically looking for a premium luxury crossover, they're going to love this vehicle as well with the leather seats that are super comfortable that provide a good amount of bolstering too. They're also going to like the, the minor details as well. But then you're going to have the people that will say, but it has Mercedes-Benz technology that was found in vehicles four to five years ago. And I will give you that. Yeah, I would like to see a touch, touch screen, but the road dial works just fine. However, do you want to see what this vehicle would have been like if Ford still owned Aston Martin? Because I can only imagine how awful the interior would be if it had Ford Sync 3 or Sync 4. I, it just, it wouldn't work with this vehicle. I like that we have Mercedes-Benz technology. I am not angry with that at all. I think it just elevates the driving experience even more, but also I love the engine as well. It has a nice exhaust note. And that's why I am a, I'm actually a fan of the Aston Martin and Mercedes-Benz collaboration. I think that's what makes the DBX special. And also it makes the current lineup of Aston Martin special as well. And that's why I think when you look at how this vehicle has been perceived and how it's been received from consumers, uh, the DBX has done pretty well when it comes to sales figures. So it's done its job. And I think when you look at what people are looking at buying in this price range, especially at a starting price around $175,000, they're going to compare this to a Bentley Bentayga or a Porsche Cayenne. And I think it is on par with those vehicles. But then transitioning back to the exterior, what I can really appreciate is that Aston Martin gave this vehicle its own unique exterior design. So of course it does have the Vantage tail lights and rear end, but the front fascia, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a DBS or DB11. So I like the road presence of this crossover. It's very striking. And during my filming of the DBX, I couldn't help but just stop for a few minutes just to appreciate the bylines and the angles. But overall, I love what this vehicle provides. And then when it comes to that driving experience, it's nothing like I've experienced before. It, it has its own unique personality. And I think it's gonna translate very well to people who maybe don't need the power that we see in a Lamborghini Urus, but they wanna have that grand touring feel. And that's why I feel like the DBX and other vehicles like it are grand tours. They're meant to be grand tours. They're meant to be driven on longer trips. And I gotta be honest, I could drive this vehicle all day. I could own it and be very happy with it. So. I love what this vehicle provides. Now, of course, pricing for some people, maybe $200,000 isn't that bad, but definitely keep in mind that the smaller bits and pieces, the carbon fiber bits or the gloss black bits, the, the, all the minor cosmetic features, both the exterior and interior, is what's going to cost the most amount of money. And that's something that you got to play around with, spend a lot of time at the configurator, but that's what makes the Aston Martin uh, ownership experience so special. And this vehicle falls right in line with the Aston Martin brand. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.